<laughs> oh dear me. This car shouldn't be this good, should it? Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, ready for a big statement. Behind me, I think is one of the best value for money cars I have ever tested in the eight years since I've been doing Petrol Ped. Behind me is the Skoda Octavia VRS. Now, as an estate car fan, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for the Skoda Octavia, especially when I was running my two Audi S4 Avants. I've looked at these as a potential purchase option before. The thing that put me off though was their lack of power compared to the S4. My two S4s were 330 and 350 horsepower there or thereabouts. And these are just 245 horsepower. That's that's less than my Mini Roadster, even though that's been modified. But there's always been something about the styling of the Octavia, and I've never actually driven one until this week. And basically, what have I been doing? Why on earth haven't I driven one of these before? It is brilliant. In this video, I'm gonna talk to you about why I think this car is so brilliant. It's not without fault by any means. I'll tell you about those as well. But let's just start off with the spec of this press car. This paint color, it's an exclusive Skoda color called Royal Green Metallic. The car is filthy. I was gonna try and wash it over the weekend, but we had really cold temperatures at the weekend and my hose pipe froze. And then today it's so wet and mingy and I'm gonna be driving it in a minute anyway. It's just no point. So apologies for it being dirty. I'll put some pictures of it when it was first delivered and nice and clean. But this green paintwork with the blacked out trim and the wheels. I just think this car looks sensational. And you may not believe this, but honestly, I am not lying. I have had more comments about this car online and in person than pretty much any press car I've had in the last couple of years. People just absolutely love it. The big question is why? What makes this car so special? This is a bit of an oxymoron. The first thing that makes this car so special is it's not that powerful. Now I know 245 PS isn't underpowered. It will get down the road nicely, but it's the fact that it only has 245 PS means that you can drive this car really hard down a B road and not be doing license losing speeds. It's so engaging, so dynamic. And I absolutely love the fact that it's not that powerful. The second thing that makes this car almost unbelievable is its price. This press car has just under 2,000 pounds worth of options on it, yet it is still only, and I'm gonna use the word only in this case, especially when you think about the current car market, it is only 38,200 pounds. 38 grand, that's under the magic 40,000 pounds for an estate car that is gonna put a biggest smile on your face and get loads and loads of compliments. And if you don't want to put the spec that's on this car, it starts from 36 grand. In today's car market, that is almost unheard of. I don't wanna go on about price too much in this video, but let's just put things into context. I had an M5 Touring very recently. There will be a video coming to the channel if you haven't seen it already. And those cars start from like 85 grand and the car I had on test was 102,000 pounds. And don't get me wrong, it's probably one of the most competent cars you can buy today. M3 Tourings are phenomenal things. 38 grand. <laughs> it's, and it's 80%. It's maybe 85% of the, of the car, of the capability. You just don't have that outright pace. You've got everything else. Um, anyway, what other things do I love? Well, rear end styling, come on. The, I love the whole blacked out look. I love the green paint on this particular car with the black contrast. I love the rear end styling of the car. I love the exhaust pipes. But what else do I love? Don't worry, we are getting onto the negative bits as well. What else do I love about this car? Look, it's a manual. There are three pedals down there. 
It's a six speed manual gearbox in a modern day car. Now this is good news and bad news. Good news is from a driving engagement point of view, it just makes this car the car it is for me. The bad news is I was actually talking to a peddler who literally just bought one of these last week and he was saying that he tried to order one of these from factory and I don't believe that you can order a manual from factory anymore. So I think you are um, either gonna try and find the last amount of manual stock new cars or you're gonna have to go used. But six speed manual in a performance estate car, awesome. Next thing I love about this car, no great surprise, it's a Skoda after all. And therefore, it's dead easy to fit my bike in the boot and there's loads of room for the puppies as well, but they're tucked up inside in the dry. Now, whenever I put a bike in the boot, I've always had loads of comments. Everyone's going, put the front wheel in last, so rear wheel in first. And it fits in perfectly if you do that, so thanks for the tip. But then the other really cool thing is underneath this false floor is probably the best 200 pound option ever. It's got a space saver wheel, people, yes. Now there was a report on, I heard on the radio the other day that something like, it's over 95% of new cars don't have a spare wheel and rely on the tire gunk. <laughs> and that just never works. Never, ever, ever works. So yeah, it's got a spare wheel and then it's got all the other lovely Skoda bits I love. It's got hooks for me shopping. It's got these little dividers on the edge. It's a super practical car, this. Absolutely brilliant. I promise I'm not going to keep on gushing about this car for the whole video, but the last thing I really, really like is the wheel design. I just think it goes very well with the spec of this car and certainly stands out. Although there were a few comments on the Instagram pictures I put up where people didn't like them. So hey, each to their own and all that. But what about the negatives about this car? Are the things I don't like? Well, I guess we probably need to cover off brand first, although I'm a bit bored of doing the whole where Skoda came from thing because that's just not how it is in the modern day. They make phenomenally good cars, but I think there still will be people who will be put off this car because of the Skoda badge. And I think that's a big, big mistake. Look past the badge, look at the car. But the first thing I'm not very keen on is the low rent front brake calipers. Now, the spec sheet, it says it's got red brake calipers front and rear, but these just look like the cheap ones that have had a bit of a paint job. I know that budget on a car like this of all the components must be really, really important and choices have to be made. But this car would look so much better if it had a nice kind of, sort of a bit like the Brembo brake calipers I had on both of my minis. It just set the car off a treat. And if you're gonna, on the spec sheet, go red brake calipers, at least have some nice red brake calipers, not those cheap looking ones. So on the inside, while I'm at it, I love the look of these seats and the material they're made of. But if we think about materials, actually, the material choice in here for the price point is very, very good. There's a kind of Alcantara type material on the dash, a little bit of satin finish carbon fiber. The steering wheel feels nice, as does the gear lever. There are some, it's not like rubberized kind of plastics and so on, a bit of scratchy plastics down here. So I think the balance of materials is, is pretty good. But there are two things in here that I'm not a big fan of. And the first one is the driving position. The driving position from a seat to steering wheel for me is okay. It took me a while to kind of work out exactly where the best and most comfortable position is. The challenge I have is the gear lever is just a little bit too far away. It would be, for me, better if the, the gear lever was just a little bit closer to me and maybe a little bit higher up because then I just feel like it would be a, a shorter journey from um, steering wheel to gear lever. I just feel a little bit like I'm stretching. Okay, so that's me being super picky. And honestly, I have had to be super picky with this car because I'm a big fan. The second problem I have with this car is the infotainment system. Let me just fire the car up. Ooh. It's a VAG group car. And one of the things that plagues those cars, if you're being super picky, is the infotainment system. Now at the moment, that's currently connecting to my phone 
for Apple CarPlay and I've used Apple CarPlay a lot, however, and it is a big however. I've used this car a lot this week. I've done well over 500 miles in it and I had to drive over to the Cotswolds midweek for another press event. And I got in the car and even though I had paired my phone, Apple CarPlay would not work. It just totally threw its toys out the pram. It did exactly the same thing as the Enyaq did to me when I had that about a month ago, if you've watched that review. Um, and it took me a while to get that Apple CarPlay back up and running. You, there's a, it's not in an obvious place. You go to where phone is and you try and do it from there and it's not, you have to go into the settings. Um, so I actually ran the in-car sat-nav for the first half of that journey. Uh, and whilst it was competent, I wouldn't say it was great. Um, so one of the compromises for this car, I think, is the infotainment system. The stereo is fine. I'm not a big loud music fan when I'm driving anyway. But if you're going to use a, a Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, fine. It's wireless. Um, there is a, you know, a little mat down here where you can put your phone and plug it in and so on. Um, but yeah, infotainment system, not the best. In terms of the main dash and the information you get on the main dash, that, I like that a lot, but yeah, infotainment system, not great. So as I mentioned, I've done a lot of miles in this car and it's one of these press cars that I've just wanted to drive. So let's go out for a bit of a drive. I need to go, and, I've just noticed, I need to go and get some fuel first because the fuel pixies need to, need to come. Um, and then we'll go through the different drive modes because I've got eco, comfort, normal and sport. To be honest, I've just put it in sport every time I've got in the car and that just seems to tick the boxes and, and the car performs and feels like I would want it to. Um, but yeah, let's go and go for a drive and I'll explain more about why this car just lights my fire. Okay. I'm actually going to start this review in a mode I haven't really used that much because this car has been spec with the dynamic chassis control which is a £1,020 option and what that gives you is three different ride firmness settings comfort, normal and sport and if you're in the comfort setting on the drive modes then the DCC is set to comfort and what that should do is just soften up all the bumps I've either been using normal or sport, and guess what? In normal mode, DCC is set to normal, and in sport mode, DCC is set to sport. So as you go up through the modes, the, the, the chassis just firms up and the suspension firms up a little bit. But even in normal and sport, the ride quality in this car is really very good. It's such a good car to do a long journey in, and the bit that's amazed me, and you don't have to be driving like Miss Daisy to do this, but on a long journey, you're gonna be getting 38 to 40 miles to the gallon. It's a super economical car, considering it's a, the sport-oriented model. I'm gonna go into mode, and then just go up into normal. Now that just um, will firm things up a little bit, Honestly, it doesn't feel that much firmer, that much more crashy. It's just a nice, relaxing place to be. The other thing I would say, and I'm not gonna be able to test it now because it's daylight, is this car as standard comes with Skoda's Matrix LED headlight system, and it is very, very good. It's one of those systems, and I've banged on about this on a number of videos recently, you sit here in the driver's seat and you watch the headlights doing their thing and I'm thinking how the hell does that work it's so clever but you basically just drive around on full beam and the car sorts it out for you blocking out the car in front blocking out oncoming traffic but when you do want to push on down a dark country lane especially at this time of year their headlights are superb and then the other really cool thing that happens at night time is you have this mood lighting at the moment I've set it to green. So you've got a nice kind of strip light that runs along the dash. The pedal box is dipped in this green hue. It just makes it a really cool place to be. And then finally, while we're in the mooch part of the review, these seats, I've mentioned how I like the way they look, but they are pretty comfortable as well. The last thing about the driving position thing I am an awkward shape. I've got long legs. I, I'm, if you've not been on one of my videos before, I've got a 34 to 35 inch inside leg. I'm six foot three. 
So in order to get my position, my arm length to the steering wheel correct, I've had to pull my seat forward a little bit further than I would like, so my legs are on a little bit of an angle. That does put a bit of pressure on my seat bones, but I haven't found myself getting a numb bum. But I still, even with that, I still feel a little bit far, a little bit detached from the steering wheel, and I've mentioned the, the distance from the gear lever as well. And I think that's my problem. I'd like, if it, there is rake and tilt adjustment on the steering wheel, I'd like that to be able to come to me a little bit more so I could put back my seat a little bit further so my legs are more comfortable, but then that would exacerbate the problem with the reach to the gear selector. Anyway, it's still a comfy place. I did a you know, two, three hour journey with no problems whatsoever midweek. But let us take this car to one of my favorite little bits of road and we'll stick it up into sport mode and have some fun. Because this car, it does the sensible driving, long journey, economical comfort thing really, really well. But it does the sport thing really well as well. Okay, let's go up into sport mode. Now I don't know whether it'll come across on camera because it's not a very noisy car in here at all. Road noise is excellent by the way, but there is a little bit of, I think it's probably piped in noise now, but the engine sounds more throaty and more sporty and the throttle mapping's a bit more sporty and the suspension's firmer and the whole car now just feels more direct and more playful. These roads are pretty greasy and pretty slippy today so caution is required. The brake pedal feel is pretty good even though I don't like the calipers, the brakes actually do a pretty good job. And then you've got, you've got to pull out the corners. It's not a lightning fast car, but as I've said, that's not the point. Because you can come down a nice kind of A or B road like this at a reasonable speed, not breaking the speed limit, I am doing 60 miles an hour, but it just feels engaging and feels fun. And you feel like you can exploit the car, you can go through the gears, you can just hold it third and fourth gears in this car are your friends, you're in there a lot. It just feels great. Now it is front wheel drive only. So if you are aggressive with the throttle, especially if you've not unwound the steering, you're gonna get a little bit of understeer. You're gonna get a bit of wheel spin and a few traction issues up front when it's damp. Road surface up this bit of road isn't great, but even though I'm in that firm suspension setting, the ride's really good. And you've just got this, I don't know, it's just a great car to drive. And you could have a family of five in here. You could have a boot full of stuff. This car just ticks so many boxes. If you want to heel and toe on the way down, you can. The pedals are spaced nicely for it. I haven't been doing that a great deal, if you want. There's no auto blip feature on the car. But it's just a fantastic bit of kit. Wowzers. to 38 grand to spend and you need a family car that you want to be sporty and premium and practical and economic you need to buy one of these it's as simple as that really 
but I've been held up by a RAV4, so let me give you my final impressions of this car as we head up the top of the petrol pet hill climb. Uh, I absolutely, as you can probably tell by my enthusiasm, I really like this car. It ticks so many boxes. For the price point, I think it's exceptional value. It's still not quite the car for me. I would need a pan roof. Um, I haven't been on the configurator almost on purpose because then I'd be tempted to buy one. But I think specking a pan roof and just getting that air and the, the light in here, it's a bit dark in here without the pan roof. And I know some people don't like them because of the weight up, up top and it raises the center of gravity of the car and everything. But the upside is you get so much light in the car. I could live with the poor infotainment system. I'm using Apple CarPlay most of the time and now I know how to fix the problem when Apple CarPlay has a baby and throws its toys out the pram. I kind of, I could live with that. Driving position wise, it's not perfect, but it's not terrible and I could live with that. So yeah, all in all, wow. I mean, put it in the comments below, name me a better value all-round package than this car in today's current marketplace i know 36 to 38 thousand pounds is still an awful lot of money and many people won't be able to afford that however my job is now reviewing new cars and so many of those new cars are pretty mediocre to be frank and in the 50 60 70 grand price range so to jump in a car, sub £40,000, that has put this much of a smile on my face, I'm going to need to get this smile surgically removed next week, has just made my week. Anyway, I'm going to draw this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.